All right, when we left off, we just picked up Blackwell. Help him fend off an attack from some bandits. And, uh, oh, what's that? Oh, that's that golden ram. He's going to come into play in a little side quest down there in uh, Redcliffe, actually. I wonder if I can discover him now. Or he can just burn off and I have to mess with these bandits. Okay. Whatever. Archers, man. You know what? I'm not exactly sure what that little cloud is there uh, surrounding my character. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm debuffed right now. I know that popped up just as soon as he hit me with that uh, with that bow. I, whatever he was, whatever that bow attack was, kind of looked like a long shot, but I don't know. It's kind of glowing a different color there for a second. All right, well, I'm not sure exactly what all that's about, but uh, whatever. All right, well, it looks like our golden ram buddy just uh, completely burned off, and I'm not going to go mess with that bear. I'll be here all day. Let's get out of here. I want to head towards Redcliffe. Matter of fact, I think that's where we'll go. I have Vivian in my party now, and uh, there's a place we're going to stop along the way where we can pick up one of the books she's looking for, one of the tomes for the circle. I guess that's her personal side quest, or maybe one of her personal side quests, I don't know. I haven't played the game all the way out, so I don't know what all the followers want done, specifically. Forgive me while I collect some stuff here. Try not to just go overboard with it, but uh, this is all really going to come in handy. You know, this this being, you know, a let's play. Well, that's maybe not necessarily a blind let's play, but, uh... Hey, like I've said before, I'd like to have something to offer you guys before I offer it. Type of deal. At least have uh, some idea of the combat. Normally I would not only completely finish the game, but go through with, uh... You know, various different scenarios and learn the ins and outs and so on and so forth. Um... Before jumping into this, but... Eh, I felt I was familiar enough with the character builds to get in here. Wasn't so far removed from Origins in Dragon Age 2 that uh, wasn't pretty easy to pick up on. The combat tactics, the mechanics aren't aren't too different. I mean, they've thrown in a few new twists to make it fresh, but uh, it's still relatively the same principles. So uh, I said, you know, I, I can't hold off any longer. I, I just I want to play this with you guys. I really do. But uh, anyway, in my my play, honestly, this isn't as bad as I normally am. Normally, I look in every corner, and if I know something's going to respawn in an area, I'll get it all, come back a little bit later and get it all again. And I'll repeat that as many times as necessary so that I can upgrade my potions, get all the crafting materials I need, um, whatever. So, yeah, I'm not going completely overboard here, but I, I'll grab it if it's on the way, most definitely. So if you see me stop to pick things up, it's usually once I've become kind of familiar with where uh, things are located. Like if I know there's a little node over here that always spawns like a particular material or something, and I'm walking that way anyway, well sure, I'll go pick it up. It's always nice to have it. Never know when I might need it. Some NPC on down the line might want a hundred of something. And I'm going to wish I had them because, you know. Oh no. <laughs> Sarah farted. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah farted in Vivian's face. It's awesome. <laughs> She's all, what's that horrible stench? Nothing. <laughs> Where's it coming from? Nowhere. <laughs> Sarah's like my favorite. Most definitely. Alright, so we'll uh, go ahead and wander through the crossroads here. We have all the magic shards active now, so uh, should be a shard to pick up along the way also. If we missed the first time over there, we're going to basically head back to the same area where we fought the uh, the bandits. The East Road bandits and set up that camp down there. Almost might be a little quicker to just fast travel to that camp over there. Might save a little bit of time, but uh, like I said, I still need to make that stop where... Uh, Vivian's book is, and also there is another quest to open up, which is going to get an agent for uh, Liliana. One of the secret agents, and I need to collect uh, three of those, and they'll be around. They're available. I just got to 
Just gotta go find them. This one in particular is going to be a lyrium smuggler. And I'm also going to need um, Royal Elf Root for a side quest there. Along with two Crystal Grace, which we grabbed in the last uh, the last one. So we'd, we have those in our back pocket, which is good. Man, the graphics are just... In some places, they're almost photorealistic. I mean, look at just the detail. The different kinds of plants and stuff. It's not just a, you know, a cut-and-paste tree. It's different trees and... I've noticed, like, if you go down to the coast where, you know, the wind's blowing in off the ocean, the trees don't all move the same. It's not like, you know, that animated swaying motion, you know, you know they all kind of move together. But uh, all trees of different sizes, each moving on their own, doing their own thing, with, you know, the raindrops filtering in between and light rays shining through the clouds. I, man, it's just, it's crazy, the amount of detail. When they get a couple years into next gen, you know, a couple years from now, where you know they've really learned what all this hardware is is actually capable of, um, I can just imagine the stuff they're going to come up with. I mean, this is amazing here. You know, if, if games are just like this, I'm I'm happy. I'm good with this. Now, of course, you know, you see something better later, and it kind of spoils you. And you come back and you look at this, and you say, "Wow, I thought this was you know uh, the shit when I saw it, and now it's so so." You know, I mean, I I can look back on on other games from before, you know, from like you know old Xbox and stuff, and say at the time I thought that was badass, and now you look back and it, and it looks almost like eight bit. You know, it's a uh, I can't imagine how good it could get to where you'd look back on this and say, "Eh, it's all right." Because this, uh, this looks pretty sweet to me. About halfway there on the ram meat. Just kind of collecting it as I go. The next area we'll be heading to, um, in the hinterlands, there's uh, a place where, uh, some more Fade Rifts to close, and some other stuff. Little side-questing things to do. Another agent to get for Liliana. Uh, actually, two. Two agents to get to, for Liliana. And uh, they're basically right next to each other. But um, there will be a lot of rams over there. I could essentially have gotten all of them really quick in that one area. No, oh, yeah. That wasn't fair. Ouch. Crooked shields, man. And that that uh, block and slash is so just awesome once you once you upgrade it and you get extra damage and uh, you also get guard every time you block. Which is good, you know, be able to take that one extra hit. Oh man. This and grappling chain are just, they're like, you know, mandatory to, this, to ah, shit, any warrior build, really, I'm sure. A Templar, I believe. I guess the sword and shield version of it is a payback strike, basically. And no, I guess not really, you don't block, I mean, shield wall. Shield wall doesn't really have a counter move. I guess if you if you backdoor those two moves, it's more or less the same thing. Probably even better, because I believe Payback Strike, when it's upgraded, if your enemy's taunted, um, you automatically stun them. Which I'm sure means either knocking them on their ass or having them stand there looking like they're asleep. Either way, do bonus damage to them. The fighting between the mages and the Templars has cost too many innocent lives. I'd like to take a minute to say that I really appreciate um, you guys that are uh, stopping in to check these out, especially you, you know, that 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 are you know following along and just you know, um, kind of coming along for the ride. I mean, I think that's awesome. I think that's really cool. I have a passion for sharing my gaming and my views and and my play style and the stuff that I do, and hopefully sharing something that someone can use or uh, giving someone some ideas that they can build on and then kind of feed them back and say, hey, you know, look what I got, type of thing. Wherever you're from, little people will know about you. 
We all have something we used to be, haven't we, dear? Done things we would rather let die than have known? By all means, escalate, but I will answer in kind. Armed with painful history, I am sure is better left to your own sad memory. She's freaking evil, she is. <laughs> they really don't like each other. They really don't. I, I guess that's kind of good. Um, I need to run around with, with Varric and Vivian, specifically in my party for a while, to see how they get along, because that's really a staple. Um, and what I was saying before, I'm, I'm really glad you guys hang out. I'm kind of excited, is that those of you who are following along, um, you're seeing, really, this is just really super vanilla. When you're down up to about level 5 or so, I've even got a video on this. You know, what skills do I pick first? Essentially, I establish the basic skills that I'm going to be using throughout my playthrough, essentially. You know, all my basic combat skills are set. You know, block and slash, grappling chain, mighty blow. That's about it. And then everything else is pretty much passives. If I pick any more active skills, it's pretty much, uh, it'll be specialist skills later on. And skills that I need to get to a particular passive that I want. Like, say, you know, challenge. And at some point, challenge may be a key um, aggro move that I use, right? But uh, I really like Warcry because it it, uh, it uh, aggros multiple enemies, you know? And uh, the the passives that it leads to are great. And I'll probably keep it even if, even if I, I don't use it. I'm kind of limited in my key bindings, meaning the action buttons that I actually have available to assign stuff to. So I'm probably going to pick one aggro skill or the other. Um, challenge is cool because it's ranged, but it's for a single target. Okay, but it, it adds guard when you use it. And it also has the added benefit of raising stamina. Now, I'm um, looking way ahead... When I get the Reaver specialization, there's there's basically two paths in the Reaver skill tree. You have the Berserker path, and you have the Reaver path, okay? And um, they can essentially be mixed and matched, but the pure Reaver path really relies on that, uh, you know, that Dragon's, that Dragon Rage, or whatever it's called, skill right there at the bottom. Everything needs to be upgraded, and you, and you need to have maximum stamina pool, maximum stamina regen for that, all right? Because um, Devour costs a lot of stamina to use. It's as expensive to the Reaver as a uh, Lightning Bolt is to the Mage. If you ever wonder, once you assign Lightning Bolt to your Mage, why he can't cast Barrier and other things quite as often as he was, because it's eating up most of his stamina pool um, when he uses that. Okay, that, that is a reason. And if you have that combined with a lot of other offensive skills, if you wonder why he's, you know, when he's left to his own devices, not using all those all the time, well, if you don't have him set up for maximum mana regen, um, that lightning bolt, uh, it costs a lot. 65 is actually a lot for its use. And I think it has a relatively short cooldown, so um, he can use that more often. And if you've got that as a preferred skill, um, essentially you're cutting out a lot of his other castings um, because he's going to focus on that, and it's going to spend so much of his mana when he does. And then if, you've got, and then if you um, add on top of that, if you haven't gone in and adjusted um, your character's behaviors, and you've got some kind of mana or stamina reserve, um, odds are, if he does use it, that's about all he'll use. You may find that happening. Um, just kind of depends on how you have all your settings and stuff. Anyway, with the Reaver, Devour is kind of like that. Um, it's really, really expensive to use, and um, as is suggested with the Reaver, when you have Circle of Pain, which, while it's active, it has a huge stamina draw. It's like uh, 10 stamina per second over time, which can drain your stamina, like, really fast. Okay, and you add in Devour on top of that, even if you've got all the um, different stuff to make the Devour cooldown um, really short, um, if you don't have any, any stamina, you still can't pull it off. And so you wind up expending all your health, kind of like a Blood Mage, um, using your attacks, especially like Dragon Fury, but you don't have any way to get your health back. Um, of course, unless you use your... Uh, your uh, what do you call it, your super ability or whatever, Berserk, but uh, you don't have any, any real way to get it back unless you use Devour. And like I say, you really need Devour upgraded all the way so you can get a good chunk of that health back because you're going to spend it really fast. Not only in battle, if you're going to have enough enemies around you to make all this viable, um, then odds are you're taking damage. If you're playing on Nightmare, you're really going to be taking damage. And if you're not uh, centering on a lot of aggro stuff, keeping your guard up, if you haven't really concentrated on your armor, then your health's really going to go down and you have to have some way to get it back really fast. Your cooldowns have to be really short. Your stamina regen has to be through the roof. You have to have a huge stamina pool. Everything's, you know, got to be right in there. So, um, looking ahead to that, challenge does have the added benefit of greatly increasing your stamina regen. 
um, when you use it uh, for a period of 10 to 15 seconds, which is great if you're sitting there um, spamming challenge, spamming um, Dragon's Fury, spamming uh, Devour, and basically working that. And you, you kind of wind up, from what from what I saw in the little bit that I played with it, um, you kind of have somewhat of a uh, of a Mass Effect 3 Vanguard style type thing. Um, I don't know if you watched any of my Vanguard uh, videos, but it's it's more of a high risk, high reward type deal. You go in and you spend your whole shield for damage, and you charge into 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 mobs to get your shield back, and you basically go back and forth. You know, charge Nova, charge Nova. Well, it seems kind of similar here as you have uh, Dragon Fury or Dragon Rage, whatever it's called, and Devour, and go back and forth, and everything has to be buffed to keep your stamina up so that you can use Devour, so that you can get your health back, so that you can spend Dragon Fury, and there has to be a synergy there. But it has to work really fast, and so you have to be in the thick of it, constantly swinging, hitting enemies to get your stamina back, as well as have your stamina regen every passive that you can find. Um, if you say to yourself, well, if I get a damage bonus for being hurt, then I don't want my mages casting barrier, and I don't want to have a lot of guard. Well, on Nightmare, guard doesn't last long, especially not for your main character. Guard lasts forever on Cassandra if you build her right. Um, she's gonna she's gonna have more guard than health most of the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy how effective her guard is, especially once you get her armor rating up and stuff. But on your main character, your guard will go down pretty quick. So what I've noticed is guard is kind of a good buff to take a hit or two, because you're going to be taking damage anyway. So you're going to stay hurt, especially if you're in the thick of it, you know, in the in the middle of it all the time fighting. Okay, so you're going to get that damage bonus. So having an active barrier, um, if you have your mages set up to where any barrier that they cast um, regenerates your stamina faster also, it's the passive down to the bottom left on the spirit tree. If you have that stacked with the other passive, and I think, uh, I don't remember which tree it's on for the warrior, but there's one that um, regens your stamina faster once you get below 50% stamina. Okay, then you have challenge, which regenerates your stamina for a period of uh, whatever it is, 10, 15 seconds, whatever. If you stack all of those things, your stamina should stay up there enough to be able to spam devour along with your dragon fury back and forth to make that effective. Now, me personally, the dragon fury kind of takes my weapon out of the picture. And I like going in with my sword, and I like that steady damage output. So I tend to take more of the Berserker path. And we're going to, of course, look at it at all this in depth and actually see it in action once we get around level uh, in the 15 to 20 range. Okay, But uh, right now, just looking looking ahead, um, I guess what brought this up is, is I watched a video on, a, on a, a, a guy had done. And to give him his credit, you know, he took the time to do the videos and stuff. But it seemed like all he was doing was assigning points... And he even used the word synergy, and that's what kind of pissed me off a little bit, is uh, I was like, use the word synergy, but that doesn't apply to your builds here, because basically what he was doing was reading off skills and applying whatever points he had and saying that this is what you do in, in action. Playing on casual, I guess you could really assign your points anywhere anyway, and you don't have to worry too much about tactics. Even even on normal, basically. But if you if you get into Nightmare, where, where it's it basically um, it, it puts a check on you. It, it, it checks your build. You know, if your build's right and your tactics are right, you can walk through it. But if if something's off, if you have points misplaced, if you don't have synergy, and there's that word, synergy, if, if everything doesn't work together, if this doesn't buff that, which in turn buffs that, which in turn buffs that, which in turn buffs this, if you don't have that that circle of, of life going there through your party, um, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get destroyed. Maybe not in every situation, but in a lot of situations when you're really tested. Um, your whole party's gonna get wiped in seconds. You'd be like, well, what happened? Uh, you know, I've been owning up to this point type of thing. No synergy there. This person's not, not not fulfilling his role, which enables you to do that, which enables your next party member to do that, and so on and so forth. If everyone feeds off one another, you're gonna be brutally effective. If they don't, you're, you're gonna get destroyed. So, uh, and, and that's, you know, I was thinking about his builds in practice, and he had this uh, basically min-level Reaver build where he said, this school, this skill sounds really cool, so I put a point in it. Okay, well, you don't have anything to buff that, so the first time you use that in any dire situation, um, you're going to get destroyed almost in, in, instantly. You're going to pull that off twice. You don't have any way to get your health back. Your stamina's gone. You're dead. All right? But maybe even on normal. All right? But certainly on Nightmare. All right? And my, mine is geared towards survivability and effectiveness on Nightmare so that if you play on normal or whatever, you're going to be so ridiculously effective that, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. And it's, it'll, be, it'll be like cheating, but you're not. You know that's 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 the that's the end that I try to reach. You know without without mods or glitches or exploits or any of that. Just specifically utilizing everything to its fullest that I can based on what I know of the game within the skill trees to create the uh, you know the strongest party you can. 
I'm, I'm not saying my, my builds are perfect, but I noticed he didn't have a lot of things in place there um, that you would need uh, just just to just to just to get by, much less be effective. And so, anyway, looking at all that, but here we just had the bare bones. You know, this at level five. This is just uh, enough abilities to roll a little bit, and we don't know what these rifts can do. Nothing's upgraded yet. To alter the time around. It. But uh, anyway, I'm really excited to get to those higher levels and we can really get into tactics and see them in action. Go up against some tough stuff and just, just run it over. You know, pulling off huge criticals and putting out a steady stream of damage. And, and that's this is really geared towards is where we can do a no pause, just run where you're just, you know, dishing out the pain. And that's uh, that's fun to me. That's fun to me. I, I like I like making it brutal. Where you just go through and you're just, uh, you know, wrecking crew type deal. At least that's how we hope it turns out, right? <laughs> All right, so we got a couple favorites under our belt. Got Vivian her book there. Even got a uh, a mosaic piece, and we are here in a uh, Red Cliff. We spread word the Inquisition was coming, but you should know that no one here was expecting us. No one, not even Grand Enchanter Fiona. If she was, she hasn't told anyone. We've arranged use of the tavern for the negotiations. Agents of the Inquisition, my apologies. Magister Alexius is in charge now, but hasn't yet arrived. He's expected shortly. You can speak with the former Grand Enchanter in the meantime. All right. Thanks for listening to me prattle on there. It was fun. I want to chat with you guys, and uh, we will catch up the rest of Red Cliff here. We'll do some questing in this area when we come back. In the meantime, if you want to subscribe, hit that button over my head. For the rest of my videos, click those boxes on the left, and I will catch you guys later. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.